thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. The kingdom is yours. The earth, the fullness of the world. Yours. You do not want us to be in bondage. And therefore, Lord, in the bind, everyone, use Jesus' name. Glorify yourself. Magnify the name of Jesus. And do wonders in every life, even today, because we pray in whose name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down. Now, the Lord has been talking to us on his power to lose and to set free. Now, the Lord is talking to us today on our own personal responsibility to lose yourself. I'm coming to Isaiah chapter 52 and I'm reading from verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment, O Jerusalem. The holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, shake thyself. From the doors, you cannot be waiting there and saying, I'm waiting for something to happen. Make something happen. I'm waiting for somebody to lift me up. You will lift up yourself. We have slept for too long. We've been lying down for too long. We've been helpless and hopeless, waiting for, uh, we'll just open our mouth and then we'll say, let somebody there come, get me up, awake, shake thyself from the doors, arise and sit down. Your time of rest, restoration, your time of recovery has now come. I said your time has come. It says, Loose thyself from the banks of thy neck. Did you hear what the prophet said? You know, many people are waiting for the prophet. Pray for me. Pray for me. Give me this. Give me that. Many people are waiting for the prophet. Do this for me. Pray for me. Fast for me. He said, Now it's now in your hand. The ball is in your court, as they say. Loose thyself from the binds of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. I'm talking to you today in this worship service on awake. Loose yourself lest you are lost in captivity. Loose yourself. The open door is there. The power is there. Our emancipator is here. Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Savior, and the healer, the deliverer, the redeemer is here. And he says, didn't you see how he ministered to them when he came? He says, stretch out thy hand. It is a let, bring your hand. Let me stretch it out for you. Stretch out your hand. Did you hear when he told that man that was brought by four people and he said, Arise. He didn't say, Okay, give me your hand. I'm going to pull you up. Once the Redeemer is there, your redemption has come. And now you are the one. Loose thyself from the banks of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion, the message once again, awake. Loose thyself, lest you are lost in captivity. The three things I'm bringing to you. Number one, loose yourself from the bands of captivity. All the sign of captivity. All the appearance of captivity. Anything, 
anything, even the smallest that has come into your life. It says you lose yourself from the banks of captivity. Number two, learning beyond yourself. The beauty without contamination. Beauty is coming to your life. Glory is coming to your life. And you'll be very careful. You don't allow contamination to come. Again, number three, lifted above yourself. Whatever you have done, you are going to go higher. Wherever you have been, wherever you have gone, Whatever territory you have covered and whatever progress you have covered, I came to announce to you from heaven that you are going to be lifted above yourself by the bruises of Christ. He strives, heals us. He strives, delivers us. The bruises on Christ, what he suffered on the cross of Calvary has come to lift you up above yourself. To the level you can never lift yourself. Christ has come. He will lift you up. I am lifted. I am lifted. From this day, mark the day. Write the day. You are lifted above yourself. Wherever you have ever been, you are lifted in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Number one now. Number one, lose yourself from the bands of captivity. We're looking at three things there. Number one, shake yourself from the dirt of captivity. Number two, sold, that's the question, unsell yourself from the demons of captivity. You see, there are people, they do not put much value on their own lives. They do not put much value on their existence. They do not put much value on their possession, on what they have. Your life, the great gift of God, the possibilities in your life. And a person sells himself unto the uh, demons of captivity. You recall the person you sold your life to, the person you sold your destiny to, and the person you, stole, you sold your future to. You say, come, come, come here. I get back my life. I'm not selling anymore. I get back my talent. I'm not selling anymore. I get back my destiny. I'm not selling anymore. You'll be in possession of everything the Lord has created you with and the destiny and the possibilities he wanted for your life. Today, you will recover them in Jesus' name. Number three, strengthen yourself. Don't wait for you know, something from the outside. Actually, nothing that comes from outside can strengthen you as what is inside you. I'll show you. When Christ, the strength and the power of God enters you, when God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, dwells in you, and when the Holy Ghost, the power of God here on earth, when he dwells in you. Now, uh, the strength is not coming from outside. You don't need those hard drugs. You don't need all the marijuana. You don't need all the alcohol. You don't need all the smoking. You don't need anyone from outside of you to strengthen you. The power within will work in your life without limitation in Jesus' name. Look at that number one there. Shake yourself from the dirt of captivity. Look, look at uh, that again in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. It says, awake, awake. If you sleep, a sleep is a time of inactivity. And sleep is a time of no production. And sleep is a time of no progress. You have a brain, but your brain is sleeping. 
You have a mind, but your mind is sleeping. You have an able body. A body that can carry you from here to there, but the body is sleeping. We have the giant, but the giant is sleeping. And the Lord is telling us, if you keep on sleeping in the dust, if you keep on sleeping in idleness, if you keep on sleeping in expectation, I'm expecting something to come. Some Get up and go and get it. And from today, you'll be a go-getter in Jesus' name. That's why it says, awake, awake. Put on thy strength. Ah, the strength is there waiting for you. The power is there waiting for you. The provision is there waiting for you. Put it on. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And then it says, it says, you the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. You didn't say amen to that one. The uncircumcised who are those like Goliath coming into Israel. And the Lord is saying now, he blocks the way. That that Goliath, the giant of Gath, will not come into your life anymore. Amen. Will not come into your family anymore. We open the way. We open the door to the Almighty. And then we close the door to the uncircumcised and the unclean. And I want to tell you, Lucifer is uncircumcised. The devil is uncircumcised. And the, that devil, Lucifer, Satan, unclean, will block the door. Will lock the door. It will not come into your life anymore. All the things unclean, uncircumcised, that will hinder you, hinder you from getting to the top where God has a man for you this morning. The door is closed against them in Jesus' name. And then look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, shake yourself from the doors. You know, if, if you put an item, whatever the item, you put it on the ground. And you think the environment is clean. And you leave it there a day, a week, a month. By the time you come back and you look at that thing, all the dust has gathered. There are many people that, you know, the, the dust has gathered in their brain, in their thinking faculty, in their life, in their personality. And they just let it there, and it's there all the time, and the dust has gathered. And it says, that when you take that cloth, and you see all the dust there, you shake it like that, and all the dust will vanish away. And it says, now you shake yourself from the dust. Anything that had gathered over your life, whatever you call it, the Bible calls it sin. The Bible calls it dirt, defilement, that will just stay there. And anybody can use your body the way they want. Anybody can use your mouth the way they want. Anybody can take your destiny and, uh, you know, make it empty the way they want. But now, you'll be in control of your own life. Shake thyself from the doors. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Of the bands, bands, bandage. Bands, bondage. Bands, all the things that had bound you. you. You have good hands, but they are bound. Good feet, but they are bound. Good mind, but they are bound. Good eyes, but they are bound. Good brain, they are bound. And good vision and good destination, everything bound. It tells you, but now you lose yourself from the bands of your neck. O oh, captive daughter of Zion, I am free. Who determines whether I am free or not? Somebody says, Pastor, pray for me. You know those enemies? 
They are the ones that will not allow me to be free. There's no enemy that is as powerful as your own inner man. When you say no to that power, to that personality, heaven will say no. When you lose anything, no one will say anything. Begins with yourself. When you lose yourself here on earth, it is loosed in heaven in Jesus' name. Look at everything that has hindered you from making progress spiritually, hindered you from making progress professionally, hindered you from making progress in your family, hindered you from making progress in every area of your life, and you have been waiting, 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 and then you open your mouth, come, somebody come and lose me, somebody come and set me free, you're free by your own faith today in Jesus' name. I come to number two here. Number two, I'm looking at souls on sell yourself. From the demons of captivity you know in life we do not understand the intention we do not understand the proposals we do not understand the people that come into our lives anybody that smiles will say come in anybody that you know uh, stretches out his hand will say have my hand anyone that says can i have your life Okay, you want my life? Here is my life. We sell ourselves to people, to demons, to destroyers, to the people that will get rid of every good thing we wanted in life. That's why it says in verse 3, it says, For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for not think about the people you've given you know, the precious things in your life to and you sold yourself you go to school and you have you've never met this child before he might be a demon inside and uh, you know a friend outside and he says i'll be your friend without asking who are you what do you have? What's your intention? Do you know my goal in life? Do you know my pursuit in life? Are you going to add to me? Or are you going to take away from me? We don't ask any question. And to be your friend? Yes, you're my friend. I'm your friend. I want to be your companion. Of course, here am I. And I want to have, and I want to take everything you have. Look, I have, we even begin to tell them, like Samson, Delilah, you know what? You recognize the power. I'm going to tell you everything, even the prophecy before my birth. I'm going to tell you everything and told her everything. And something sold himself. Here comes Ahab. And Ahab looked around. He didn't see any beautiful lady in the land. A king. And then he got this foreigner. A worshipper of Baal. And he was supposed to be a worshipper of the almighty God. And with the rolling of the eyes, of the painting of the face, and with the everything that she could, uh, you know, present, uh, he had said, looks like a beautiful woman. That's the most beautiful woman in the world. He had uh, you're about to sell yourself. And eventually Jezebel came in, brought in Baal worship in the land until everything was totally devastated. And the Lord says, you have sold yourselves for naught. Ahab, tell me, what did you have for selling yourself and selling Israel, the nation, to Jezebel, nothing, something, tell me now. 
You sold yourself to Delilah. Tell me what you've got. Nothing. And I'm going to ask you, what have you got? Think about you must think. You sold yourself to alcohol. You sold yourself to hard drugs. You sold yourself to a gang. You sold yourself to a secret society. Now, let's analyze. What did you have before you don't have now? Every good thing you had before you don't have now. You sold yourself. You sold your life. You sold your brain. You cannot even think. What's the result of the action of my hand ye have sold yourselves for naught but thank god we will unsell everything we have sold i said we will unsell everything we have sold it says and ye shall be redeemed without money without money oh can i ever since i sold myself and then now here is my situation how can i be redeemed and recovered and restored without money there's something greater than money is the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ on the cross of calvary and it will redeem you it will restore you you become as full as you were before you did the selling. A new life is coming to you today in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here, I'm talking of strengthening yourself against the dictatorship of captors. You know captors? Captors, those who capture people. And those you bring them into captivity. Over the years, over the decades, over the centuries, they develop methods by which, although you are captured, they know you'll be trying to find a way to come out of captivity. And so they come with quite a lot of gadgets, a lot of things psychological. A lot of things traditional, a lot of things spiritual by which the captor will keep someone in perpetual captivity. And as you are thinking, I can overcome that, I can overcome that, the following day a new thing comes out that you've never thought of and you've never seen the captors they are evolving evolving everything they can do to keep you in captivity but your captors will fail Amen. there is christ the conqueror who has come to set us free and he says whether your captor likes it or not you're free what are you Amen. 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 The result of all the maneuvering of the captors in your life today, they are destroyed. Today, they are buried in the ground. They will never rise anymore. It says, put on thy strength. And then put on that beautiful garment. He tells us and he says the strength is there. The strength is there. You will be strong. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10, it says, finally. Fin You've had other things in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Finally. You've heard some things, uh, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Here is Sunday. Finally. You've got some miracles. You've got some healing. You've got some manifestations of the power of God. Finally, my brethren, be stronger in the Lord. You lost an amen. amen. Be strong in the Lord. Why? Because everything outside the Lord that may come against your life, the Lord 
in whom you dwell is stronger and greater than them. Be strong in the Lord. Why? Because every voice you will hear from your own mind, every voice you will hear from strangers, from enemies, all those voices, there is a Lord dwelling inside you is stronger than them all. And so finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's the power that is greater, that is higher, that's the power that will totally swallow up every other power against your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 11. In verse 11 it says, put on the whole armor of God. Every armor has its part. The singing has its part. The preaching has its part. The prayer has its part. The orchestration has its part. Everything you have has shall come. Everything have the part is, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in that. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand. Our time has come to stand. Against every other power against every other sin that knocked us down in the past our time has now come say my time has now come i'll be able to stand against the walls of the devil look at verse 12 in verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places look at verse 13 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god take unto you now he didn't say give unto them the whole armor of god they know the armor of God and they recommend it to their children. My son, have you heard? Ye must be born again. Yes, dad, I've heard. But dad, are you born again? Uh-uh, don't ask me. I'm telling you, my child, what is good for you. The water that is good for your child is good for you, for you too, papa and mama. And the, the new life that is good for your daughter, my daughter, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. And ladies should do that in life, they are red. Mama, thank you for your counsel. Have you taken the counsel you're giving to your daughter? Pastor, here we come, all the members of the church. When you go out there, no corruption, and make the Lord proud, happy about you. Thank you, Pastor. Have you done what you are telling the members to do? You see, the armor of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the grace of the Lord is for everyone and is for you. And before you tell others what to do, tell yourself. Wherefore? Take unto you the whole armor of God that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. Some people say it's an evil day. It's a corrupting day. It's a destructive period. And what can I do? That's what you are to do. Even in this evil day, at this evil time, put on that whole armor and having done all to stand. I will stand. I will stand. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. In verse 15, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, 
wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the darts of the wicked. How many darts of the wicked? How many arrows of the wicked will you quench? All. Oh, they are destroyed. They will not take effect anymore in your life in Jesus' name. And then verse 17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. God. Then in verse 18 it says, praying always, praying always. Now, praying always does not mean I kneel down 24 hours of the day. You know, you are going and you are doing your work. There's a challenge like, uh, you know, that came to Nehemiah and said, Lord, help me. That's all. Like Peter was thinking, Lord, help me. Like Jeremiah 17, 14, Save me, heal me, and I shall be healed. A short prayer that comes out like that, and the Lord has listening ears. And he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, I'm coming to learning beyond yourself. Learning beyond yourself. Now, if all we learn is what we have already, we will not go beyond where we are today. If all we learn is what is a little circle of the family. We'll not go beyond a family. If all we learn is what I, I, I love that my primary school teacher and my mind is always there. If all we learn is from that primary school teacher, we'll never go beyond the primary school kindergarten level. But the Lord is saying, there's something for you to learn. There's something for you to learn. You want to get up. You want to rise up. You want to move on. You want to move forward. There is something for you to learn. Learning beyond yourself. The beauty without contamination. Beauty, where is that? Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains at the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. That's the beauty. They bring glad news, good news, glad tidings. And it says, and they bring the good tidings and the gospel. The gospel that will set us free. It says, therein lies the beauty that publishes peace that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that says unto Zion, thy God reigneth. That's beauty wrapped up like that. The beauty of heaven. The beauty of holiness. The beauty of happiness all the days of your life. You learn beyond yourself. And that's when you have real beauty. Uh, you understand? Many times we look inside. And as a voice, self-talk. And it's talking to us. And as you look inside, more inside, more inside, you become more sorrowful. And you remember all the bad, bad things. And you look more and more inside. And you, and you remember all the things that stopped you in the past. Look away from yourself. And look at Calvary. And look beyond yourself. And learn. And then you'll come out of that sinking feeling in Jesus' name. Amen. Three things. Number one. Number one, the gospel of salvation through his name. The gospel, learn that, learn that. The gospel of salvation through his name. Number two, the goodness of the Savior for all nations. Learn that, that whatever nation you are in, wherever you are born, the goodness of the Lord will reach you there. 
I said the goodness of the Lord will reach you there. There are people in our own country here. They look around. They cannot see any goodness. They see everything is going down. Everything is going down. Going down the drain. And then they begin to look outside. And they go. They say, I'm escaping from our country. And they go there. Doctors go there. Engineers go there. Lawyers go there. Professionals go there. They think they're escaping bad, bad things. And then they get over there. The land, according to them, the land of plenty. The land of opportunity. And the land of prosperity. And they, as they got there, they discover that even to pay house rent, and to feed yourself, and to school your children, and to have buoyant economy for yourself, they say, it was better for me when I was in my country. And they're looking for ways to come back. And there's still people that will not see any good, but your goodness will come to you then. You don't have to run away anywhere. Your prosperity will come here. Your progress will come here. Number two is the goodness of the Savior for all nations. And then number three is the godliness of the Son. Now in our nature. The Son brings his own nature into our nature. And that brings godliness. Look at number one. Number one is the gospel of salvation through his name. Isaiah chapter 52, I'm reading from verse 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, shall they know in that day that I am a he that does speak. Behold, it is I. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, how beautiful. Upon the mountains, at the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, and that bringeth good tidings of good, of good, that publisheth salvation. Salvation. The good news of salvation. The gospel of salvation. Turn away from your sin. Turn to the Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's the good news. You receive that. You accept that. You believe that. Salvation comes to you in Jesus' name. Look at the last line there. Thy God reigneth. And when you receive that salvation, God will reign in your life. Sickness will not reign in your life. Calamity will not reign in your life. Evil, the devil, will not reign in your life in Jesus' name. Thy God reigneth. You wake up in the morning, say praise the Lord. Thank you, God. I slept last night. I'm awake now this morning. And this morning, this day, is now that day for you to have the opportunity to reign in my life. I go to the office, evil power, charcoal, the spread on the chair or whatever will not reign in your life. God will reign in your life. You get to the market and all the other market people is always calling Jesus, Jesus, and he doesn't worship our idols with us. And they want to do something, whatever they do, they get it from the sea, they get it from the bush, they get it from the forest, they get it from, you know, one man sitting there on the doors and uh, writing something, wherever they get it. All those things will not reign in your life. The God of heaven will reign in your life. Sickness will not reign in your life. Calamity will not reign in your life. Accidents, accidents every day and every year will not reign in your life. No more. They will not reign anymore in Jesus' name. Thy God reigneth. Look at number two. Number two there, we're looking at the goodness of the Savior for all nations. The goodness of the Savior for all nations. Those online, 
those watching, uh, uh, you know, on television, those listening on the radio, or you have your tablet there with you, and you're watching, you're listening, any nation where you are, the goodness of the Savior will reach you in that nation in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 52, verse 9. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. All the nations. He has made bare his holy hand. Holy hand of blessing. Holy arm of sustenance. Holy arm of deliverance. You didn't say your amen. Holy arm of redemption. The, uh, the Lord has made clear, bare, visible the Holy arm in the eyes of the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. I will see the salvation of our God. We've all the time been looking at the destruction of the enemy, the destruction of Satan. And we've all been looking at the corruption, the calamity, and the evil of the evil doers. Turn your eyes and focus your mind on Jesus, and you will see the salvation of our God, the redemption of our God, the healing of our God, the liberation of our God in Jesus' name. Point number three there. Number three there is the godliness of the Son. The godliness of the Son. Now in our nature. You see what he has come to do? He left heaven. Did he have something he didn't have in heaven? He's looking for on earth. No, but yes. There's nothing he needed for himself that he came to this earth to look for. But he came for you. He saw that all the goodness and all the godliness available that God has put made available here, your eyes were not open and you could not see them. And he said, okay, I'll go there. I'll open their eyes and they will see the goodness that God God has packed and provided for everyone on earth. He was in heaven. He needed nothing for himself. But he knew there were men and women that were crippled. And they were crippled physically and spiritually. And they could not rise up and walk into the place where the provision of the Lord is. He said, I'll come there, I'll rest them up, and they'll be able to see, they'll be able to walk to where those goodness, those good things are. That's why he says now, he's going to give us now his own godliness, his own lifestyle. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 11, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from this, out from this, touch no unclean thing. And then he says, go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. We bear the vessels of the Lord. What's inside that vessel? The vessel of the Lord. Grace, goodness, godliness, oil, the oil of joy, the oil of peace, that's what you have inside that vessel. And you are bearing the vessel. What does he say? Depart ye. Depart ye. Go ye out from things. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. So that 
your life will not contaminate the content of the vessel you bear. So that your lifestyle, your practice will not contaminate the content, the oil, the joy, the peace, the power that you have inside that vessel. How do you like it? That somebody is, you know, bringing you food. And while he's bringing the food, he's talking. And all the saliva from his mouth is getting to that food. Uh -uh, you don't want to eat that. That person has, uh, you know, some, some, some germs there inside the mouth. And it has contamination inside the mouth and it's all the way talking 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 and it's saliva with bacteria is coming to that food i say why don't you stop talking while you're bringing my food to the table that's what the lord is saying we preachers and we pastors and we who declare the goodness of god we don't have we shouldn't have anything in our lives anything in our families that people will hear and say he preaches good but his life is corrupt he's stealing the money from the church he says we should be clean so that the contamination in the life of the preacher will not get into the content of the vessels we're bringing and we are clean and you are clean and the goodness of god will be multiplied in every life in jesus name we're looking at verse 12 in verse 12 it says for ye shall not go out with haste without prayer ye shall not go out with haste without prayer meditation you know the people they're running they're running they want to come and minister and they forgot to pray and they forgot to read the word and they forgot to have the grace of god sufficient in their lives to minister life to the people who are dying don't be in a hurry for ye shall not go out with haste but no go by night for the lord will go before you as we're going back home the lord will go before you those apparitions and evil things we used to see and the cobweb you used to see on the way you will see them no more and those enemies that you know always you know they're standing there and wants to see them in their peculiar color of dress and uh, they say you are coming out of the church now come to me here and still control your life all those evil controllers of life and destiny they go from you in jesus name for the lord will go before you and the God of Israel shall be thy rare word. In the rare, that is, behind you, nothing will shoot you down from behind. In front of you, nothing will bring you down in Jesus' name. All the stumbling stones, all the pebbles, and all the dangers, the Lord will clear out of your way your Lord will go with you and your Lord will come behind you. I come to point number three now. Point number three is lifted above yourself. Lifted above yourself. I don't know whether you are taking notes. You should know where you are today. This is the level you are today because the Lord is going to make you come above, beyond that level in Jesus' name. Every area of your life, we are not going down, we are going up. I am not going down. I am going up. Lifted above yourself now there's nobody that can lift you above yourself 
among the people that are below you. It takes somebody to come above you and lift you up above yourself. There's nobody, your, your peers, the people horizontally that can lift you up above yourself. It takes somebody that is up there with power up there, with exaltation up there, lifted above all names. And he is the one that will stretch down his hand and he will lift you up. And as you surrender everything, everything to the hands of the Lord, you cannot go worse. You cannot go down. You are going to be up in Jesus' name. Lifted above yourself by the bruises of Christ. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the amazing blessedness and supremacy of Christ. Number two, the astonishing bruises and suffering of Christ. Number three, the accomplished boundlessness of salvation in Christ. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the amazing blessedness of the supremacy of Christ. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 13, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. That's the Lord. He died on the cross. He was buried. And he rose again. And God Almighty has highly exalted him. Highly exalted him. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. He's exalted, extolled, very high. And he is the one who will lift you up. Today, he will lift you up. You'll forget the dungeon where you were before. You'll forget the valley where you were before. You are lifted into amazing blessedness in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the astonishing bruises and sufferings of Christ. Isaiah chapter 53, and we're reading from verse 4. Surely he has borne our grief. He has carried our sorrows. Any sorrow you have there, he'll carry everything away. And then it says, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. It says in verse 5, verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, and with his stripes, make it personal, and with his stripes, I am healed. The bruises that came on Christ, that made him to suffer, that is what has now given us astonishing blessing and benefit. Number three here. Number three, we're looking at the accomplished boundlessness of salvation in Christ. The accomplished salvation in my heart. That's good. In your soul, in your body, in your life. And thou and thy family shall be saved and your family, and everyone that you come across, 
the salvation will keep on extending, on extending, extending to everybody in Jesus' name. Your life today, your life tomorrow, your life on earth, your life when you get up to heaven, the salvation will be accompanying you and going with you every time in Jesus' name. When you are asleep, your salvation is still there and it's at work. When you are awake, your salvation is still there and it's at work. And your salvation is nearer to you than any enemy can be close to you. Your salvation is there closer to you than any problem, any perplexity of the world. And the Lord will make you have, know, enjoy all that boundlessness of your salvation in Jesus name now in Revelation chapter 7 I'm reading from verse 9 Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations now let me tell you before i go on when you look at that multitude whom no man could number of all nations you'll find me there among them i'm talking about myself i say here on earth i have salvation and there until death I have the salvation and then I cross over and I see great multitude a heavenly host I said when you look look very well look very well at, you know my face look very well you'll find me there how about you how about you I will rejoice what you one will get over there I'll find you there Where's my brother there? I'll find you there. Where's my sister, my daughter there? I'll find you there. It says, after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, closed, what white robes and palms in their hands. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God. We got salvation from God, and then we go back to him, and we lay the crown at his feet. Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And then in verse 11, and all the angels that stu stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four living creatures and all before, and they fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God. God. Look at verse 12 and it says saying Amen Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God. How long? Forever and ever and everybody said Amen, Amen. Verse 13, in verse 13, it tells us about the question, and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these? Who are these? Which are arrayed with, in white robes? And whence came they? Verse 14, in verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou Knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out 
of great tribulation. All the trials, all the temptations, all the problems will come out of them. Amen. You will think as you look at the persecution, the tribulation that the early church went through, you think you'll not find them on this final day. Yes, you'll find them. You'll think all the persecution and all the negative things that blew against our lives, you will think that they'll blow us now. We'll remain down there forever. But no, we will be in that final multitude. Because they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That is it. When you come to the Lord and you are washed in the blood of the Lamb, and he looses you from all the chains of sin, all the suffering, all the shackles, he makes you loose and he sets you free. And now you put spring under your feet, power in your heart, and you are walking in the way of righteousness on that final day. Praise the Lord, you'll be there. I've been talking about somebody. Who am I talking about? Where are you? Raise up that hand, stand up wherever you are. The Lord himself has come to set us free and to lose us. And now he says, lose thyself. Any yoke there, any bondage there, any idolatry there, any secret cult there, any gang there, any hard drug there, anything you sold yourself into there, give it up and say, I own self. I'm not selling my soul anymore. I'm not selling my destiny anymore. I come and I come to Christ. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed, shall be delivered, shall be redeemed, shall be set free. And the blood of the Lamb will wash you whiter than snow, whiter than snow. And then when the roll is called up yonder, your name will be called. You'll be there. You will be, you must be there. Raise up that hand again. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your love. Father, we thank you for the commandment and decree that you have made that we lose ourselves and the unclean, the uncircumcised will not come into our lives anymore. I pray, Lord, everyone here, sinner, save them, seek, heal them, bound, deliver them, sold to slavery. Lord, unsell them and make them free in Jesus' name. And I pray the mark of redemption, the work of redemption will be seen clearly in every life here today in Jesus' name. And I pray as your people go, no Philistine will follow them. No circumcised person will follow them. And no unclean demon will follow any of them. Free. Free, free, set free by the liberator, the Lord Jesus Christ. You are free indeed in Jesus' name. Go in this your freedom. Go in this your liberation. Be happy, be joyful, be successful, and keep on going higher, higher, higher in jesus name thank you lord confirm it in every life in jesus name we pray